Hi, I'm Stacy McBride. In this brief presentation, we'll be looking at how important it is for a CyberSec first responder to be able to monitor systems and then detect when an incident occurs. By doing that, they'll be able to protect their organization from additional harm and contain the incident. Being able to do an active analysis of an incident is also very important in determining its root cause. And in this presentation, we'll be looking at one of the activities from the full CyberSec first responder course. Let's get right into that now. When you're examining a system, there are a number of different things that we may want to look for to identify any type of uh, evidence related to an incident. Of course, uh, we need to understand what processes are running on the system. We're going to be interested in the open network connections, uh, registry keys that may be used, and so on. So we're going to have a look at each of these in turn. So first I'm going to open up a administrative command prompt on the system and just simply type in the IP config slash all command. Now, of course, this command gives us detailed information about the uh, IP configuration of the system that we're currently examining. And of course, this is going to be helpful if we're looking for the IP address and logs on other systems. And so we can identify that this system is actually using IP address 10.39.5.10. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a SSH connection through to another system so that we can see the effect that that has on our open network connections. So I'm going to use a program called PuTTY in order to do this, and we'll connect up to our file server, which is at 10.39.5.50. Prompted to provide my login. And now that I've logged into the system, I can verify that I'm there by perhaps typing the hostname command. And you can see that I've connected to server 01. I'm just going to leave that connection open for a minute. And now what we want to do is we want to look at the open network connections that are leaving this system. So I'm going to use the netstat command. And what I want to do is display not only all of the connections, but also the executable files that are associated with those connections. And that's why I need the administrative command prompt because this uh, command will require elevation, otherwise it won't work. So if I do netstat-ab, where a shows all, b shows me the binaries that are involved, and I pipe the output of that through the more command, I'll get one page at a time. And so now you can see the connections that are shown on the left are the connections uh, on my local machine, and the addresses on the right under the foreign address heading represent addresses on other systems. So I'm just going to hit the space bar and go down a little bit further here, because what I'm looking for is a connection that's going out to the SSH port. You can see here that I do actually have one that is coming from my machine, 10.39.5.10, which is the address we saw in the IP config command, leaving port 50333, going to server 01, uh, on the SSH port, which is port 22. And we can see that that is an established connection. Now, below that, you can see that it indicates that putty.exe is the executable that actually is responsible for that connection. So if we're examining a system and we see any suspicious ports that are open, we might be interested in identifying which processes or which programs are tied to those ports so that we can identify whether those are legitimate or not. Now, the next thing we might be interested in is what processes are actually running on this system. So in order to view the processes, I could use something that's built in like Task Manager, but it's very limited in its capabilities. Whereas a tool like Process Explorer from SysInternals, which is now a Microsoft uh, product, it uh, was created by uh, Mark Rosinovich, and he still works for Microsoft, as I understand. And uh, this uh, tool is like Task Manager on steroids. It gives us uh, much more capabilities. So looking at uh, our Process Explorer, we can uh, scroll down through the uh, various processes that are listed on the system. And you can see it shows the hierarchy of those processes, which parent process called, which child process, and so on. And you can see under Explorer, we've got PuTTY. So this is the program that we use to start up that uh, connection to the outside world. And if we uh, right-click on that and view our properties, 
uh, you can see that on the TCP IP tab, it actually does show that uh, we do have this established connection uh, from our client machine to the remote address that we identified earlier, and that's an established connection. So that gives you an example of what we can look at. Now, PuTTY itself uh, doesn't open up any additional files because it's a self-contained executable. But if we've got, let's say, uh, some type of malware or some questionable software on the system, we might want to get an idea as to just exactly what it's doing, or maybe collect enough detail so that we can uh, match it up with known indicators of compromise and thereby be able to determine whether that particular piece of code is malicious or not. So if we uh, click on uh, Just Sketch, for an example, this is the uh, Java uh, Update Scheduler uh, program. And as we examine that, uh, you can see that uh, it does have a number of files and handles that are open. You can see in the bottom half of the window, a number of different files that are being accessed and a number of different registry keys. And so those registry keys are important because a lot of malware will write uh, values into those registry keys so that it will automatically start up. Uh, when the system starts and that way it will be able to preserve its control over the system so these registry keys are of some use and we can also view the DLLs uh, that are in use so I hit control D there and it displays all the different uh, DLL files that are being referenced by this uh, particular uh, program and so there's quite a few and once again these DLLs that are accessed along with the handles that are in use may give us some uh, clues as to whether the program is malicious or whether the program uh, is not. So if we want to look at uh, some of the entries that this program may be using, we could of course uh, view this registry key to see what kind of values are stored there. And we'll do that in a minute. If I right click on uh, Just Sketch, you'll notice that uh, one function that's built in here is to actually check programs using what's called VirusTotal. It's a website that uh, maintains multiple antivirus engines, and we can use this automatic submission to scan, and really what it does is it submits the hash value of this file up to VirusTotal, and if it recognizes the hash value of the file, then it can determine whether that file is already known to be uh, safe or malicious and it also if it can't find the hash value can upload the uh, program now over on the right hand side here you can see the virus total findings if i click on that it'll actually open up a, a browser that'll take me through to the virus total web page where it shows the results for this file and this is the hash value of the file that i just submitted and you can see it's found zero out of 57 engines have detected that as being malicious. And so there's a good chance that either it's A, not malicious, or B, it could be uh, an unknown piece of malware, a zero day exploit, something that no one's found yet. Uh, so, of course, just the fact that it hasn't been found as being malicious doesn't prove that it's not, but it does give us a reasonable level of confidence at least. Now, of course, if we find something that's flagged as malicious, then of course that gives us a positive that we can work from as well. Anyway, let's uh, check and see uh, what else we can find out about this program. So if we were to open up one of the registry keys that are being used here, you can see that this is HKLM, that's the uh, HK uh, local machine software key under WOW 6432 node, Javasoft, Java update and policy. So if we were investigating a piece of malware, we might want to uh, go in here and then perhaps uh, run regedit. And when we open up regedit, it will have to run with privilege. You can see that I've already scrolled down to that position in the registry. You can see I've opened up HKEY local machine, software, WOW 6432 node, and then we've got Javasoft and Java update policy. And so these are the different values and keys that are stored in here. And of course, if there was anything uh, particularly malicious being represented, then uh, we might be able to see that there. Of course, remember, a lot of malware is going to put itself into auto run entries so that it can uh, start back up each time you start your system. And uh, then, of course, uh, again, by looking at these registry key values, looking at the files that are used by that particular application, we can then match those up with known indicators of compromise that might be able to indicate 
whether what we're looking at is a, a malicious piece of software or not. And of course, if we find that we're unsure of this or we, we believe that the software may actually be malicious, then we may decide uh, to get rid of that application. And so I could right click on that and actually kill that process to stop it. And then, of course, do further investigation to identify whether that particular piece of software may or may not have caused additional damage to the system. I hope you've enjoyed this brief excerpt from the full Cybersecurity First Responder course. To protect your organization effectively, your incident responders are going to need proper training. To learn more about the CFR certification and available training, as well as details regarding the certification exam, please contact Logical Operations using the information given on the slide.